Hello, my name is Carlos Urban and today I'm going to talk to you about how to shoot pictures during the sunrise. Uh, I'm going to talk about how I shot this particular picture and also uh, what I did in terms of editing uh, with Lightroom. Well, this is a picture that I took last Sunday and uh, what I, I want to show you first of all is what the raw file looks like so that you can see that it really did not require a whole lot of editing other than a little bit of contrast and sharpening so for me what that means is that you know the settings and the lighting and all that was uh, was done correctly now uh, when you when you go and shoot a sunrise uh, with a model my first recommendation and it's kind of obvious is that you show up really early okay because it, the sunrise comes very very quickly and you want to make sure that you have all of your settings and do your test shots and everything out of the way before your model arrives it, when I took this picture the basic setup that I had was I use a reflector with a stroke and I was basically shooting front because my plan was basically to have the sun right on her head so that would be the backlight and I was basically shooting against the sun so I needed to counteract the power of the sunlight uh, by the way I recommend that you buy a app which I think is actually I think is free it's called Sun Seeker there is a light version and I believe that one is free and it tells you exactly at what time is the sunrise and when you point the iPhone or Android any whatever smartphone you have towards the sky it will tell you exactly where the sun is gonna come up uh, I used it for the first time uh, when I did this shoot um, and, and it was wonderful because my original plan was to shoot on the other side of the pier and as soon as I knew where the sun was coming up then um, you know I was able to adjust so basically I was using a silver reflector and it was just straight to her. Here you can see when the model arrives, um, you know, basically uh, I was pointed exactly to her, a little bit higher. Maybe in this particular case, now that I think about it, maybe I would have put it just a little bit higher, maybe more at an angle. But anyway, uh, and I was shooting with a 70 to 200 and we'll see in a second if I was zoom all the way at 200 I was holding a tripod because with this lens you know I didn't want to risk any uh, motion shake or blur and make sure that the picture was really sharp and this as you can see I was very low so this is kind of the angle that I was when I took this picture so let's talk a little bit about uh, the picture itself let me see let me find it. Uh, okay, where is my filter? Sorry. So, uh, well, this is another picture. So, this is my raw file. Let, let's first start with the raw file. Uh, the only thing that I did to this particular, the only thing that I did to this picture. Well, first let's talk about the settings. So, I was at 86 millimeters. And it was because it was a full body shot. Actually, I did many other shots where I was three quarters and even uh, almost a headshot. And I was uh, at that point mostly at 200. Now, the reason why I chose F11 was because I wanted to get um, detail in the background. Uh, a lot of, um, and this is a matter of taste, a lot of photographers will shoot this kind of picture at F4 or 5.6 and get a blurry background but in this particular case I really wanted to get that beautiful sunrise maybe it's because I love also doing landscapes and maybe there is that landscape photography in me that I want to shoot that beautiful sunrise so that was the the basic idea and I was at ISO 200 and actually you know I I probably recommend that when you have the sunrise you shoot at ISO 100 if that's your native I was at 200 because I started shooting before the sunrise and a little I needed that little bit more power you know just to be able to be at f11 
but the settings again what I always do is I expose for the background first once I have the background that I want then basically um, you know expose for the background at the f-top that I want which in this case was f11 I was able to be to do it at 100th of a second and ISO 200 sometimes if it's very bright you may have to go to 250 of a second and go to ISO 100 or even go to a neutral density filter now I've talked in other videos about hypersync and doing that but again when you have the sunrise and, and you're talking about minutes and sometimes it's a matter of seconds when you get that precise moment when you want the model you know with the right pose and the sun coming up then then you really don't have a lot of time to be to change in your mind and uh, I was using a light meter and I wanted to make sure I didn't want to leave any room for error so um, so this is what I did now I'm gonna show you a little bit also how I process this picture uh, in in this case for me the main thing is I wanted to have a little bit more contrast more detail on the you know the clouds a little bit of more detail in the clouds I also didn't want to have the lights so even from top to bottom I actually think that if I would shoot this again looking at the picture I might have used a grid because I don't want all this light in the front I'd like a little bit of a fall off so those were kind of the corrections that I decided to do in Lightroom so if I go now and show you the history of what I did um, you know it looks like a lot but sometimes it's, it's, it really isn't so you know first I did uh, you know cropping because it was um, you know you need to do a little bit of cropping then you use the highlight tool to remove the, the sun uh, highlights uh, then I am um, you know cropping is always for me one of the tough parts because I keep going back and forth and back and forth because of the composition now then comes lens profile I always like to do lens profile because uh, you know I, I, I want to make sure that there is no distortion on the lens now comes the white balance so I went back from daylight then cloudy cloudy was a little bit you know too orange for my taste so I went back to daylight then you know something that I usually do with landscapes is I try the camera profile in landscape now uh, this is not something I typically do with portraits but in this case it worked I, I think that you know she has uh, with this particular model it will you know it, it basically then it didn't hurt the you know it actually made it a little better in my case because I thought it was a little bit too light so actually going to landscape make, making it a little bit uh, was a little bit more natural for me then I always do the auto tone to see if I like it but then I usually don't and I go back to playing around with the exposure and the highlights and then I started adding a graduated filter so I could get the sky a little bit darker uh, and then um, you know I was playing around with the contrast medium was too much so you know it's, it's kind of then I try a little bit of the vibrance but then you know everything seemed way too exaggerated that's one of the problems sometimes with the sunrise that with the sunrise people will think that is you know that you pump up the, the saturation and actually what you will see in a moment is that I end up uh, lowering the saturation then I started playing with the sharpening with the radius in the sharpening the detail a little bit of the masking so that she would stand out uh, again this is not a class on Lightroom it's more how I took this shot and very quickly show you what I did then I did an, a little bit of a um, adjustment brush to um, you know to make something stand out went back to graduated filter and and you see it's, it's this whole thing with the white balance is always so subjective and I kept going back to to my white balance here is what I was telling you that I st I actually went to minus 10 in saturation said oh, well minus 10 maybe too much maybe I go to minus 7 
then oh so then I did an, an another adjustment brush because I, I wanted the water to stand out a little bit more it was it was very dark so I started playing around a little bit with the water and then I wanted the, the water to look a little bit more with the same you know color balance as, as the sun so I played with that a little bit went back to cropping I didn't like the crop that I had so I went back to um, you know to a uh, more of this look for some reason when I looked at my original picture I like the cropping of the original better than the one that I had done and again composition and white balance for me is one of the things that sometimes I spend the most time you can see a lot of crop you know back and forth back and forth and then at the end you know for the finishing touches just wanted to make sure that I had my exposure right and you know this is the final edit and I wouldn't be surprised if in two or three days when I look at this picture again maybe there is something that I still want to tweak but I think the most important thing that I wanted to point out to you is you can see that the edited picture and the original picture are basically the same I mean the, there is really very little that I that it, it seems like a lot but when you have the right lighting, then the rest becomes very easy. If I would have had a lot of problems here with my lighting, I mean, clearly, you know, it lacks a little bit of contrast. I'm shooting against the sun. But other than that, um, you know, the, the, there wasn't much that, that I needed to do. I, I wanted to have a little bit of a more dramatic uh, look, so that's why I went to more of the contrasty look. But for some people, again, it's a matter of taste maybe you like this better so in summary my recommendation is that you show up really early you start metering the light go with a friend or somebody that uh, that can help you so that you can you know do different test shots before the model arrives I like using a long lens uh, the 70 to 200 for me is the ideal lens especially on the beach because uh, I get compression which I like and um, you know I uh, this is my preferred lens for for this particular type of shoots so I hope you found this useful uh, again my the point of doing this video is because sometimes these pictures seem like very hard to do and they are not uh, you just need one light and and preparation and and having your exposure correct and metering the light and 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 that's it I mean it's not a whole lot more that you need to do oh one more thing I forgot to mention one of the things that I had to deal with and this I knew right when I uh, I actually wanted to do this with a beauty dish a silver beauty dish but as soon as I arrived it was so so windy that I changed to a reflector so I did have to play a little bit of with the distance of the reflector to make sure that I did get enough uh, coverage because when you have a small reflector you know you may not have enough uh, light for a full body shot so you just move it a little bit back in this case I think I moved it too much back because I got too much light here and that's why I had to play a little bit you know with the, f the fall off uh, on my edited shot because I, I do like you know the face to be more lit and then to kind of start going down maybe a stop lower when you get to, to the foot. So thank you very much and I hope you found this uh, video uh, interesting and, and encourage you to go and do some sunrise shoots uh, with models or family or whoever. Okay, thank you.